good evening students once again i come to you with a being series today we are coming to talk about very important phenomenon in the eye and the topic is lacrimal drainage system the lacrimal drainage system what is it all about well the eyeball needs lubrication and constantly the lubrication should have a source 90 percent of which is made up of uh, the lacrimal gland and its production of tears okay so constantly you have water or tears being produced and now whenever we blink these tears are spread evenly on the surface of the eyeball to bring about lubrication to also help so that when we blink there will be no uh, impediment in the movement of the eyelids on the surface of the eyeball in a nutshell the lubrication helps us to see clearer but for the lubrication our eyes will be dry so the lacrimal drainage system today we are coming to talk basically about the major structures that compose or which come together to form the lacrimal drainage apparatus so we're coming to start with the mentioning of the names of these particular structures so we have the lacrimal gland which is found at the superotemporal aspect of the orbit okay apart from the lacrimal gland we have excretory ducts okay excretory ducts look at them these are the excretory ducts it's a lacrimal gland excretory ducts those pores or so orifices through which when the water comes from the lacrimal gland the water passes through to come and lubricate the surface of the apple. We call them what? Excretory ducts. Excretory ducts. Okay? So, apart from that, we also have the marginal strips. Look at the marginal strips. Okay? These are the marginal strips. They are found at the level of the gray line. Okay? The marginal strips, they are found at the level of the gray line. They help in carrying off some of the tears. Okay? Then, apart from that, we have the punctum. 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 Okay? We have the punctum. Look at the punctum here. Inferior punctum, superior punctum. This is the inferior punctum, superior punctum. All right. So, the punctum is an orifice. Look at it here. It's an orifice, an opening. All right. Where is it found? Divide the eyelid margin into two parts. The medial one cis and the lateral five cis. The media one cis and the lateral five cis. What is the difference? The difference is that the lateral five cis contains the eyelashes. Okay? It contains the eyelashes. And the media one cis doesn't contain the eyelashes. You understand me? Uh -huh. So, we need to get this division because it is at the junction of the where the eyelashes are and where the no, eyelashes don't exist that is where the pantum is found okay so where the eyelashes because remember your old class i told you that the eyelash is also known as cilium the price cilia okay so the eyelash is found here at the lateral five c's and the media one sees there are no eyelashes. You understand me? Okay. So we call it pass lacrimalis. Pass lacrimalis at the media 
one sixth of the eyelid margin where you don't have any eyelashes okay for the past lacrimalis and then the lateral five cysts where you have the eyelash you call it what pass ciliaris because it contains the cilium or the cilia so pass ciliaris is lateral five cysts of the eyelid of the eyelid margin whereas the pass lacrimalis which contains a lot of uh, uh, what i would say the tears okay which is the media one cysts equal what pass lacrimalis so the junction between the pass lacrimalis and pass ciliaris is where we have the, the pantum the superior pantum is here and that's the inferior pantum okay all right so in continuation of the pantum what do we have we have the canalicular system okay in continuation of the pantum we have what the canalicular system so we have the inferior canaliculus and then the superior canaliculus okay so the canalicular system has two major parts what are they it has a vertical portion a vertical portion and a horizontal portion a vertical portion and horizontal portion a vertical portion horizontal portion the vertical portion is also called the ampulla the vertical portion is also called what the ampulla vertical portion also called ampulla okay so this is a vertical portion is called ampulla plural is called ampulli so vertical portion is called what ampulla okay so this is a vertical portion is called what ampulla look at the inferior ampulla and this will be the superior ampulla do you understand me and the measurement is two millimeters two millimeters so the ampulla then curves and turns horizontally turning itself into what we call the horizontal canalicular system superior one and then the inferior one okay remember that the anatomical structure here at the media portion here is known as what the lacrimal lake lacrimal lake why lake contains water okay lacrimal lake here because it contains majority of the time a lot of tears okay all right so this is called the lacrimal lake mm? so from the horizontal canal clause in 90 percent of the general population we have what we call the common canalicular. That is where the superior canalicular system meets the inferior canalicular system before they join the sac or the lacrima sac. I repeat, in 90% of the general population, we have the superior canalicular system joining the inferior canalicular horizontal system to form what we call the common sorry the common canaliculus this is found in 90 percent of the general population in the remaining 10 percent the superior canaliculus join the sac separately like it happens in this case it joins the sac separately from the inferior canaliculus all right so we are just mentioning the structures so from the canalicular system you have the lacrimal sac okay the lacrimal sac all right you should remember that at the level of the common canaliculus or if the canalicular system enters superior one if it enters independently of the inferior one in other words if they enter separately or if they have the common canaliculus the junction between the common canaliculus or the separated ones and the sac there is a mucosa okay there is a mucosa constituting a valve what's the name of this valve we call it valve of rosenmuller or rosenmuller valve okay 
there is a mucosa called rosemula valve at the junction between the canaliculus and the sac we have a mucosa known as what rosemula valve so the rosemula valve will be here and it will be here rosemula valve will be here and it will be there rosemula valve will be at this particular area what is the function of rosemula valve it will be here all right rosemula valve will be here and rosemula valve will be there what is the function like all valves do its function is supposed to avoid okay the retrogress or return of tears from the sac into the canaliculus system okay is to avoid reflux of tears from the sac into the canaliculus system so let's talk about measurement of the horizontal canaliculus it measures about 8 to 10 millimeters 8 to 10 millimeters okay so now this is the lacrima sac okay it lies within the lacrima fossa and the lacrima sac measures between 10 to 12 millimeters 10 to 12 millimeters in length 10 to 12 millimeters okay so that is it so in continuation of the lacrima sac is what we have we call what nasolacrima duct nasolacrima duct this is the structure here nasolacrima duct so in other slides you see the nasolacrima duct over here is in continuation here have you here seen it nasolacrima duct okay it's here this is also the nasolacrima duct okay it moves from here and downwards this is the nasolacrima duct what is its measurement it measures 12 to 18 millimeters in length so it extends from the inferior portion of the lacrima sac to the inferior nasal meatus it extends from the inferior portion of the sac to the inferior nasal meatus okay again we should bear in mind that there is a valve which is found at the junction where the nasolacrima that enters the mucosa of the nose okay and it is known as hasna valve hasna valve what does it do the hasna valve okay the hasna valve so the hasna valve will be somewhere here okay the hasna valve will be somewhere down here what does it do it prevents reflux of tears from the nasal mucosa or reflux of nasal discharge into the nasolacrima duct so that's what the valve prevents okay that's what hasna valve prevents okay so we have grossly look at the structures that uh, are able to help production of tears and how these tears are drained and they pass on the surface of the eyeball they are drained and how finally they end up in the nasal mucosa where it is absorbed ladies and gentlemen remember that sometimes when you cry you see water coming from your nose hey it is very simple in a state of emotions when there is a lot of quantum in the production of tears remember that the lacrimal gland produces quantums and quantums of tears and it will end up passing through all these systems that i'm speaking to you about the canaliculus, the pantum canaliculus system, the sac, the that, and it ends up the nasal mucosa. If the production far exceeds absorption within the nasal mucosa, 
then it will start coming out that is why you see people when they are crying you see that they have a lot of tears a lot of water coming from their nose this is part of the lacrima drainage quantum of which has passed through the lacrimal system canalicular system and a portion of it will pass through the nose okay so let me grossly go through how tears are drained okay how tears are drained so basically the lacrimal gland is here as i said from the lacrimal gland tears are produced and once they are produced they pass through what the excretory ducts excretory lacrimal ducts okay they are about six to ten in number found where at where the lacrimal gland itself is found so once the tears are produced they pass through the excretory lacrimal ducts all right after that these tears pass along the marginal strips okay which is found at the gray line the marginal strip is found at where the gray line all right so the marginal strips tears pass there and a good number also comes straight away a good quantity also comes straight to lubricate the ocular surface but constantly tears are being produced okay remember that once they lubricate the surface of the eyeball superiorly and inferiorly a good quantum of the tears come to accumulate at where we call the lacrimal lake area the lacrimal lake area okay the lacrimal lake area how much of tears do we found in this particular lake at the lacrimal lake area generally it is between 7 to 10 micro microliters of tears okay and the lacrimal lake refers to the pool the pool of tears at the lower conjunctiva cul de sac the pool of tears at lower conjunctiva furnace or cul de sac okay generally at this place and you may also find it lining down here because of force of gravity you may hardly find it concentrated up here you find it down here okay so um so the lacrimal lake refers to the pool of tears at the lower conjunctiva cul de sac which drains into the punctum it drains into what the punctum the inferior punctum and then the superior punctum the volume should be between general the volume is between 7 to 10 microliters let me just tell you what is one micro what is uh when we talk about one liter one liter is equivalent to one million microliters one liter is equivalent to what one million microliters so when i talk about 10 microliters it refers to you having one million uh let's say small small volumes okay pieces and then taking 10 of them that is what i mean by what 10 microliters all right so the volume of the lacrimal lake is what 7 to 10 microliters remember that that is what is usually found over there when we say that somebody is tearing or tears have caused down somebody's cheeks or tears are flowing somebody's cheeks below somebody's cheeks it means that the quantity has reached 25 to 30 microliters before someone is said to be tearing you said that what the lacrimal lake have reached a quantum of what 75 to 30 microliters like a general lake when it becomes so abundant it will overgrow its banks and then to start flowing out so before it sees tears flowing down somebody's cheek it means that the lake the lacrimal lake has reached 25 to 30 what microliters okay and also remember that the excretory ducts are found at the superior and lateral half of superior conjunctiva furnace as i said at the level of what where the lacrimal gland is found 
So once tears are produced, okay, they come lubricate the ocular surface. They are found here at the lacrimal lake area. If it is so much, that's why you see people crying and they are shedding tears. It is because it has rich volumes of what more than 30 microliters. Then it starts flowing down here. Okay. But if it is physiological and it is not the emotional production of tears, okay, it enters into the what? The lacrimal pantum. The lacrimal pantum. Look at the pass ciliaris. Okay. Pass ciliaris. And that is pass lacrimal. Lacrimal because generally contains tears. Okay. Look at the pass ciliaris. And that is pass lacrimalis. Okay. So the tears will enter into the pantum, inferior pantum, superior pantum. Go through the vertical canalicular system, also known as the ampulla, then superiorly, inferiorly, then go to the horizontal canalicular system. If there is a common canalicular, which is found in 90% of the general population, it passes there. If it happens that the individual doesn't have the common canaliculus because he's part of the 10%, then it passes to the superior canaliculus or the inferior canaliculus to enter into the lacrimal sac. Okay? But before that, there is a valve, okay? Which is known as what? Rosenmuller valve. There's a valve known as what? Rosenmuller valve. This valve prevents reflux of tears or return of tears from the sac into the canalicular system. All right. So once the tears enter into the sac, and remember the horizontal canaliculus measures about eight to ten millimeters, and the sac measures ten to twelve millimeters in length. Once the tears enter into the sac, okay, they go down, okay, into what we call the nasolacrimal duct. From the sac, the tears go into what? The nasolacrimal duct. So from the sac, the tears go into the nasolacrimal duct, okay? From the nasolacrimal duct, where do the tears go to? They enter into the nasal mucosa, specifically at the inferior nasal meatus. Okay, inferior nasal meatus, where there are a lot of capillaries that absorb the tears into the systemic circulation. But there is a valve which is known as what Hasna valve. What does this valve do? It prevents reflux or return of tears. From the nasal mucosa into the nasolacrimal duct. All right, so that is what the Hasna valve does. So it's important to know about how these tears flow, the system through which it flows, and how it is done. In subsequent classes, we will talk about so many things about the flow of tears. So if you see somebody crying and tears are flowing there is excessive production of tears we cannot go to the pantum to go to the system and those that can go to the pantum the nose will not be in readiness to absorb everything so some of it will pass through the nose and then come out so ladies and gentlemen having talked about the anatomical structures which produce and help the passage of tears, be it on the ocular surface or through the canalicular system, okay, to be absorbed into the nasal, at the level of the nasal mucosa. Let's talk about the physiology, physiology of lacrimal drainage system. Before that, remember two important terminologies, positive pressure and then what? Negative pressure. When we talk about positive pressure, what does it mean? It means that there's excessive pressure, all right? A lot of the pressure. And when you hear negative pressure, it, def it means that there's deficit of pressure. The pressure is lower than it should be. Look, 
at this particular picture you have but remember another thing that i need to tell you about which muzzle helps to close the eyelids okay is the what which muzzle helps oculomoto uh, uh, sorry the 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 muzzle which helps to close the uh, the, the eyelids okay is the obicularis oculi muzzle the obicularis oculi muzzle and the one which helps you to open is the levator palpebrae superioris the levator is innervated by the oculomotor nerve but the obicularis oculi muzzle has its innervation by what the facial nerve anytime we close our eyes there is compression on several structures that help in production of tears and drainage of tears okay so for example when you close your eyelids the lacrimal gland is compressed upon by the obicularis oculi muscle similarly here when you close your eyes the lacrimal gland is compressed by obicularis oculi muscle okay so let's talk about the physiology here so once we these eyes are not closed okay whatever you find the ocular surface the blue color is tears that you find over there right so there is pressure within the canalicular system or the tear drainage system is negative now is what negative when the pressure is low then it means that the canalicular and all the cavities that are containing that have the pressure are ready to suck and increase the pressure that is found within them so therefore you realize that there is negative pressure once the eyelids are open the bicularis are relaxed okay and it means that they are in readiness to what to suck all right so once the bicularis contract because the eyelids are closed okay they we create what we call the positive pressure the positive pressure when the bicularis are closed there is medial positioning of the pantum okay there is also increased pressure okay within the canalicular system the 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 lacrimal gland is compressed upon okay there is positive pressure which is produced within the canalicular system all right and also positive pressure is created within the sac nasolacrimal duct and everywhere and when there is positive pressure the pressure is so much okay so once the individual opens the eyes the pressure which is here in the which was the positive one have to push the tears down the systems the nasolacrimal sac the that and to the nasal mucosa okay and once the eyes are open the pressure becomes negative and when the pressure is negative it means it is less and when it is less it means the sac the canalicular system all right have negative pressure and they are readiness to suck more pressure to increase the pressure which is found within them already okay so you need to know about negative pressure and positive pressure when the eyelids are open there is what negative pressure so therefore there's the the canalicular system and the sac are in readiness to suck the amount of tears that are what found on the ocular surface to increase the pressure in there because it's negative and they want more to make sure that it becomes normal they will suck okay they will suck these tears that are found on the ocular surface to increase their pressure to move from negative to make it become normal and to create positivity and once uh, it becomes positive how does it become positive okay it become positive because the eyelids are closed they squeeze more tears from the lacrimal gland okay the tears are also squeezed through the canalicular system all right 
more the 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 media the panty are what move more medially the canalicular system are filled with tears positive pressure the sac the is filled with tears because there's a lot of positive pressure and it is pumping down all these tears downwards which will end up in what the lacrimal system and once the eyelid is open it comes back to negative in readiness to suck again and then the cycle continues so ladies and gentlemen gentlemen this brings me to the end of today's lecture continue reading what the youtube put down questions and this will help us to clarify once you meet me until i see you again continue learning hard and uh, i wish you the best